Good afternoon. This is Rich Nass with Open Systems Media, and I am here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. This week, I have the pleasure of speaking with Greg Schmergel, who is the co-founder and the president and the CTO of Nantero. Hi, Rich. How are you? I'm very good, Greg. And yourself? Very good. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do first is be sure that our audience understands who Nantero is. So if you could just take 30 seconds and just give us the uh, brief overview, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Nantero is a, a semiconductor development company focused on next generation memory using carbon nanotubes. We started out in 2001 to commercialize an idea that my co-founder and CTO Tom Rukas had while he was getting his PhD at Harvard to make memory using carbon nanotubes. And so we started Nantero together to turn that into a commercial reality and since then have built it into a company with uh, over 55 employees in Massachusetts and California and several other states and countries and over $78 million in funding raised to date as well. Okay, so help me visualize what you mean by carbon nanotubes. What is, what is that? A carbon nanotube is a nanoscale uh, tube made out of carbon, so it's about two nanometers in diameter, and it looks like a rolled-up tube of chicken wire uh, with, uh, uh, with carbon uh, at each, uh, uh, at each uh, point, uh, and the carbon nanotube is about 50 times stronger than steel and conducts electricity and heat better than just about any other material known, and it's very flexible as well, so that lets us use it in memory as a essentially a, a mechanical storage device where we move the nanotubes from position to position in and out of contact with each other, and that creates two very different resistance states with a very high resistance and a very low resistance to represent the zeros and the ones. Interesting. So what technologies are you displacing with, with this new technology? We can actually compete with both flash and DRAM because the speed of our memory, which we call NRAM, for nanotube RAM or non-volatile RAM, depending which one you prefer, is actually just as fast as DRAM while being non-volatile like flash. And you can also achieve very high densities, so much greater than DRAM and competitive with flash uh, on the density side. It also has theoretically unlimited endurance since the nanotubes should never wear out from making the very, very small motion that they make from zero to one and back again, which is a distance in the very low uh, nanometers. And where does that fit on the power consumption scale? The power consumption, if you measure it in right energy per bit, is in the femtojoules. So that's even substantially less than NAND flash. Okay, so everything has its trade-offs. What's the downside? The biggest downside is that it's not in production yet, so you can't buy it yet. Uh, however, we have installed the carbon nanotube memory module in a number of production fabs already, and we are working both ourselves and in support of some of our customers on product designs, so hopefully we will remedy that very soon. Okay, and like most technologies, uh, or I should say like most new technologies, I, I, I assume it will be a little more uh, expensive than what we're, what we're used to today. It depends on what you're comparing it to. If you're comparing it to DRAM, we actually expect it to be cheaper. And so for the first few years, it will fit in between NAND flash and DRAM on the, on the price, uh, in terms of price. Okay. And if I understand your model correctly, you're licensing this as IP rather than actually selling chips? That's correct. And that was a major decision that we had to make 
all the way back at the beginning of the company because it determines a lot about how you build and grow the company. And we decided to go with the licensing model for several reasons. The first is that to become a memory manufacturer, even a fabulous one, requires a, an enormous investment, somewhere in the many hundreds of millions of dollars. And as you know, raising money for a semiconductor company has only become more difficult over the, the last many years. So the, the possibility of raising hundreds of millions of dollars uh, seemed, seemed relatively low. Uh, by comparison, we've raised only $78 million in our history to date. So that's actually a, a quite a small amount for a memory company and that's enabled by our business model. So we have very, very low capital budget. And then the, the second big reason was the customers and the feedback we got from customers who told us that since memory is always a critical aspect of the system, that they would prefer to minimize any and all risks involved. And that if we would follow a licensing business model and license the IP to their favorite suppliers, whether it's a fab or a foundry, so that they could work with established manufacturers and buy a new memory from an established manufacturer, they would very much prefer that business model. So for, for those two reasons and a few more, we decided to go that route. But, uh, but it is actually... Uh, uh, a decision that was uh, big enough and I suppose interesting enough that actually Harvard Business School wrote a case about it a few years ago. Interesting. So are there any publicly announced licensees? We have uh, almost uh, about a dozen different licensees. Most of them are not publicly announced. The ones that we have been able to announce are uh, Lockheed Martin in the government and military space. But in the commercial space, just about all of our, our partners desire confidentiality until the product is released so that their competitors don't get a heads up. Very good. Well, I would love to continue this discussion, but as it's called Five Minutes With, we have exceeded our five minutes. So I'd like to thank you, Greg. That was Greg Schmergel. He is the co-founder, president, and CEO of Nantero.